Good day, Africa, and welcome to another exciting edition of AU Talks. And AU Talks is brought to you by the Association of African Universities Headquarters here in Accra, Ghana. My name has always been Chrisisa. And today we are discussing a very important topic which is of great benefit and interest to the entire continent. We are discussing the succession plan for the African youth. And I have with me two wonderful guests to help us discuss the topic into details. We'll go for a short break and when we return, I will let you know my guest. Stay tuned. Botswana Accountancy College is a business school that was set up over two decades ago to contribute towards the human capital development in Botswana and beyond. BAC has over 20 years diversified its product portfolio to offer accounting, business, leisure, management and ICT related programs at undergraduate and postgraduate levels, as well as consultancy short courses to augment professional skills. In achieving this diversification, the college has partnered with UK-based universities of Durban Sunderland and Sheffield Hallam University, as well as professional bodies such as SEMA, Beaker, AAT, ACCA, CIA, Cisco, Microsoft, SAP, ESA, and SIPS to allow our graduates to have a globally recognized qualification and be globally competitive. To learn more about BAC, contact us on 3953062 in Khaborone or 2410558 in Francistown or visit our website on www.bac.ac. Also, you can visit our social media pages on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. BAC, celebrating over 20 years of creating business leaders. Welcome back from the break. You are still watching AU Talks, and AU Talks is brought to you by the Association of African Universities. Don't forget that you can get interactive with us via our social media platforms, Association of African Universities on Facebook and AAU underscore 67 on Twitter. And today we are discussing the succession plan for the African youth. And we are privileged to have Dr. Violet Makuku, and she is a quality assurance expert here at the Association of African Universities. You are welcome to AU Talk, Dr. Violet. Thank you very much, Chris. How are you doing? I'm good. Great. And you? Ah, I'm trying to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And with Dr. Violet, we also have Mr. Frank Aj, and he is a chartered accountant, and he is also a project accountant here at the Association of African Universities. And so you can just understand the, the diversity of my, my, my resource person, one in quality assurance and one a chartered accountant. And it's very important because of the topic that we are discussing today. Come in or just join us with your comment, and we'll read your comment on the show. Um, let me get started with, with the two of you. Let me start from uh, Frank. Over the years, or I think for uh, past three episodes, we have been looking at the Agenda 2063, which has seven strong aspirations. And one of the key aspirations talks about the fact that we want to achieve or have a continent which is purposefully driven by its own people, especially women, children, and young people. And the narrative over the years has always been give young people the opportunity. And others are also saying that young people are not ready, they don't have the skills. But here we are today, we are saying that the elderly must have a conscious or make a conscious effort in creating opportunities for young people. What do you make of these assertions? Thank you so much, Chrissy. Um, I think um, this is a very critical topic mm. uh, that we all have to look at it. Mm. Uh, before even I begin, um, I just want us to look at one or two uh, statistics on the youth in the African continent. Okay. First of all, um, it is believed now, according to the UN data, that the African continent is a very young continent mm. with over 60% of our population being young under people. the age mm. of 25. So if 60% uh, is below the age of 25, and we want to classify that as a youth, uh, maybe for the purposes of our discussion, we may want to even go further than just the 25 mm. and extend it to about 40. So if we extend it to about 40, it means that um, the youth on our continent is more than the 60%, mm. which the UN has stated. Sure. It means that we should be looking at about 70 to about 80% on the continent. Mm. So when it happens this way, then it means that uh, it is very critical because we have the greater percentage of our population mm -hmm. in the youth. Okay. And um, here is a case where 
the youth do not have that opportunity to take up leadership roles. Mm. So how are we going to be able to help them in terms of, let's say, the elderly? How would they be able to absorb these youth? What are they going to do mm. to help them take over? Mm. And then, um, according to the statistics alone, again, um, it says that in the year, let's say, in about 2030, mm. the population of the youth, and when I talk of the youth, because I'm using the UN data, okay. it is still below the age of 25 years. Mm. We are expecting the population to grow to about 320 billion mm. people. No, million, sorry. Million, yeah. So if 320 million people, um, we are looking at it in about um, 2030, getting to that, and that is below 25. Mm -hmm. So if we want to extend it to about 40, it means we are talking of non less a number um, within the region of about 600 million. Mm. So it means that it is very critical. So from now to about the 2030, what happens? Mm -hmm. How are we preparing the ground for this um, greater percentage of our population? How are we preparing them to take over from mm -hmm. the elderly which are occupying the, the, the leadership roles as are now? Mm -hmm. So it's very critical and I believe that uh, we can probe it further Mm -hmm. And then uh, we look at maybe the ways uh, and means where we, at least, at least we, we have so many ways we'll be able to handle this situation. But all, the point I just want to bring out now is that it is very critical. And for that matter, we would have to be able to look into it and find out ways where we will be able to absorb all these youth. Okay. Not even not all of them. How would we be able to just create that linkage mm -hmm. so that they will be able to take up these leadership roles successfully. Okay, so a clear succession plan. A clear plan. succession plan. Okay, all right. Dr. Violet, I know you are very passionate about young people and uh, this is one of the, the topics on your heart. Now, how do we change the narrative from the previous discussions we've been having to a point where we are saying that there must be a succession plan for the young people? Why do we need a succession plan? <clears throat> Thank you very much, Kwesi. And uh, thank you for this topic. Mm. I think uh, this topic is over, long overdue, mm. because for the past six or so episodes, we have been focusing on their youth, uh, linking with Agenda 2063's mm. uh, Aspiration sure. 6, uh, the role of the youth and women. But now, I think we are now closing this gap to say, we have dealt with the youth. Now let's turn on to the other side of the coin. Mm. Those in leadership positions and those elderly people who are there, are they aware that when they leave at a point, they would need some people to carry on, particularly those successful organizations, mm -hmm. whether in higher education or companies, people who will carry on the way they used to do to make sure that uh, there is a continuous rise mm. in performance of a company or an organization. Mm -hmm. But that can only happen if uh, they groom a mentor, mm -hmm. this youth, to have the skills and knowledge that they use to sustain companies mm -hmm. and to sustain organizations. So today, that is the point of uh, the rallying point that okay. we want to say to them, please, do you know that if you don't have a succession plan and if you don't groom these people and mentor them, mm. there is going to be a time when there is going to be a gap. And when you are on retirement, you hear the organization is not performing. Mm. You may want to ask yourself a question, am I not the one who created that gap? Mm -hmm. And you will also not be happy about the scenario because nobody wants something that they've worked for for many years sure. and has done well mm. to all of a sudden crumple down. Okay. Now, Frank, again to you, uh, the narrative has always been that the young people don't have the skills, they are not qualified to handle some of these key positions and then um, take over the, the key aspect of the economy, be it education, whatever. Do, we, do you think, as an expert, that currently we want to change the narrative to the older people because we think we have young people who have the skills, who have the competence, who have what it takes to take over or to also deliver 
their, their potential in, in any way that they are given the opportunity to. Yeah, thank you, Chrissy. I think you are right. Um, it's very important, just as I stressed on, on, on the, the previous um, the point. So there's a lot that can be done. Mm. It is true that um, there's a lot that has to be done even for the youth mm. so that they will be able to also take. Because from what even uh, Doc said, a time will come where uh, all these people that are in these leadership positions, mm. um, definitely they will have to move away. Mm -hmm. Huh. So if we don't have that clear plan for our youth to be able to take over successfully, at the end of the day, we'll all suffer. So there are so many ways we, we could tackle this issue. Yes, but do, do you think that young people have the competence? No. They, are, are, they, are they readily prepared to, to take over? So, so the point is that who, who, who must offer that preparation? Mm -hmm. For now, there are a lot of um, young people that are preparing themselves. Okay. They are going to school. Uh, but the problem is that even crossing over from school to the so field, the, the, job the, the job market, it is always a challenge because mm. um, what they say is that you do not have the required experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but who must provide the experience? Mm -hmm. uh, it, is, it is the people that are in the system already. Mm -hmm. They would have to put in mechanisms for these youth and the people that have even gone through the education and other things. Mm. So what brings uh, to mind is the um, university industry linkages. Mm -hmm. How well is the industry cooperating with these universities to try and see whether they will give these youth some opportunities even before they get into the working the class, real job, okay. the real job. Mm. So, so the, the, the question comes again, or, or the, the main thing comes back to the people that are in positions now. Okay. So we should be able to create that opportunity mm. for the youth, especially um, giving them some opportunities, mm. training them, grooming them. And um, when we start doing that, it becomes so easy. So by the time they are ready to even leave the scene, mm. the youth would also have gathered some experience, experience and, and they'll be able to take over. Okay. All right, that does, that's Makuku. I think one of the key things running through the conversation, even though we've not gotten anywhere, has to do with the fact that we are talking about we need to mentor them, mm -hmm. we need to groom them, mm -hmm. we need to give them opportunities. These are the indicators you keep hearing all the time. Yes. Now, in terms of grooming, mm -hmm. what must be done? In terms of mentorship, what must be done? Mm -hmm. In terms of creating, intentionally creating opportunities, mm -hmm. what must be done to support the, the young people? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Kwesi. Regarding that issue, I think it is very important to create some dialogue platforms and forum mm. where, suppose you have a staff meeting, you allow the young ones to talk, to speak, and uh, we listen to their ideas. Some of these young ones, even before the grooming and mentoring, mm. naturally, it's only that they were born later than us. Mm. But you can tell this person is intelligent. Sure. This person thinks deeply outside the box. Mm -hmm. And we need to tap into those ideas and acknowledge that these ideas are brilliant and good and we can incorporate them either in our strategic plans or in our daily operations. That way we are also building confidence in them. Mm -hmm. A step further also is that when it comes to implementation, we need to afford them space to mm. implement. I think if um, everything is right, I remember we are being told, you should do new things and make mistakes. Mm -hmm. It is out and of learn the... From, exactly. Yeah. It is out of the doing that you earn experience. Mm. And that experience also you are taught from the mistakes and the achievements. Mm. And that way, we shouldn't block them and say that, ah, you haven't done this thing before. We can do it better. Mm -hmm. No, let's hold their hands sure. if we think we want to reduce the rate of loss due but to don't, mistakes. Don't, don't you think that our, our system is so much tight that uh, we have uh, maybe there's scarcity of resources and so we know what to give you for trial and error. Now, when any company is, is recruiting, they want someone who has experience, who has already worked for a very long period of time. Because in our minds, we don't want trial and error. I'm not now going to pick somebody to 
train the person, give the person opportunity to make errors and learn out of it. Don't you think that is a, a problem? That is a big mistake that we, we make always. Do mm. you know some of these errors too come as blessing in disguises? Absolutely. Because they help us see some of the other things which otherwise we would not have seen. Mm. Simple example, Coca-Cola came out of a mistake mm -hmm. by an employee, but now they are ripping employee, uh, millions of dollars. Absolutely. And they mm. never share with us how, how they come to make this Coca-Cola. Mm. So do you see that whether the mistake was done by an elderly person or a young person, either way we should give room for these mistakes. Sometimes when they happen, it's nothing to do with tangible resources mm -hmm. of loss, mm -hmm. but they correct the processes and procedures mm -hmm. on how we do things. And we need, we can't afford not to. Okay. Now, Frank, you, are, you have worked in the space of industry, and That's now right. you are in academia, kind That's of. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of, and then specifically for your field as a chartered accountant, I know you audit and do other things. Now, how much <laughs> margin of error? Do you think we must create as industries mm. or institutions to just come in with young people who we know they are not experienced, but our vision is that we want to groom them, we want to mentor them, we want to prepare them to take over from us? You know, for a company, mm. or let's say even in the industry, for a company to say that this company is very successful, it is not just what is happening today. Okay. You think into the future. Mm. You project into the future to see what returns or what benefit uh, is this company even going to derive? Mm. You are not just going to look at today. If you want to look at the net worth of an organization, you look at the present value of all the benefits you are going to derive from now till so, the unforeseeable future. Okay. Mm -hmm. huh. So currently, leadership, maybe they have the experience. And then there are some young people coming on board. So if you are looking into the future and thinking long term, and thinking of sustainability. Mm. What you would also be looking at is that, in my absence, who is going to take over? Mm. So it is right, just as Dr. Makuku said, that we have to start carrying them along. Mm. So you start by carrying them along. What you are doing now, sometimes you delegate to the new people that have come in, mm. you look at it, you correct them. Mm. So by going through that process, I get it wrong today, you correct me. Tomorrow I'm not going to get it wrong. Mm. So you carry me along. And that is a mentorship. Okay. So by, by doing so, within the shortest possible time, you realize that they pick the skills that you have as an out okay. and even add their own personal skills to it mm -hmm. and better it for all of us. Mm -hmm. So that in the future, if you are not around as an out, they would also be able to carry on with all these things. So even it is, have institutional that is a point. So, so, so even for the people that are even managing affairs as are now, okay. because they want to also look at the long-term benefits that will come to the organizations or even the, the country, it is better they look into the future. Mm -hmm. And looking at the statistics I gave mm -hmm. at, the, at the initial stage of the, the, the whole show, it tells you that some time coming, we are going to have about 80%. Can you imagine having 80% of the whole entire population of the African continent mm. to be in the youth, yes, to be is. under under 40. Mm. And if we have not been able to mentor them to take over, mm. then what use is, is that going to be to us? Mm -hmm. So we should be thinking of that. And if we are also thinking of that, then the mentoring and the things that we have to do now, we, we, will, we will do it freely. Okay. And, and, and take them along. Okay. Now, Dr. Makuku, you are a quality assurance expert, and mm -hmm. this question may be a bit difficult, but I need to ask you mm -hmm. uh, because you are the position where you make decisions. Now, what do you think every institution on the continent must do in terms of bringing young people into their system? Mm -hmm. For example, if we have um, an academic institution, mm -hmm. what should be the percentage of young people consciously? You know, in some time past, we we're talking about give women the chance in mm. the political space mm -hmm. and some countries made it possible to give to create some even though we're not going anywhere mm. to create certain um, environments and avenues for women to come in mm. do you think we also need to get to that point where we have to extend that same modality to young people mm -hmm. that if you are setting up an institution or if, if there is an existing institution let's say 20 percent of your population or your staff mm -hmm. must be young people even if they are not or staff, they are learning or they are in internship or something. Mm -hmm. Do you think we, we, that is the way to go? Thank you very much, Kwesi. I 
more than 100% agree with you mm. uh, that um, in order to set things right, uh, through my uh, quality assurance institutional evaluations, mm. I sometimes get concerned when I get into institutions. Okay. You see you are in a boardroom and all the deans, the directors, the VC, the hair is white mm. as if uh, they've been put uh, <laughs> right for the hair. And so you try to look for black hair. Mm. It's in bits and pieces and patches. That's a dangerous sign. Mm -hmm. It means this institution is in danger because you have the lot of these old professors and we have uh, very few uh, people who are in the, in the system mm. to look at what the professors are doing. The professors have got no one to mentor. They are grooming no one in their field mm -hmm. and that's pretty dangerous. Mm. So the scenario, look at the Association of African Universities. You realize that recently a lot of young people have been recruited into the system. So at the African Union yes. um, mm. as well? Yes. Mm. As we move along, mm. you realize even if we don't make a deliberate move, they will learn the ropes mm. as we intermingle and work together with mm. them. So it also points to the recruitment mm -hmm. framework, okay. the recruitment policy. The institutions should make a deliberate move mm. to make sure that during recru recruitment they are balancing youth and gender mm -hmm. as much as they want those experienced uh, uh, um, professors and elderly people. As sure as sun rises mm. and sun sets, at a point they will also need to go and rest. Like what uh, Frank has said, when mm. they go to rest, who will take over? Yeah. That's so, important. So, so, so Christy, just, yes. just to add to okay. um, yeah, yeah, what, what, what Doc said. You see, when we come to the higher education circles, mm. Mm -hmm. the one problem is that how many professors do we have now mm -hmm. that we can confidently say are all part of the youth? Mm -hmm. Most, about, about let's say, let's, a greater percentage uh, do not belong to the youth. Yeah, you become so a, averagely a professor. Averagely, yes. It's like 45 years. 45 years, 50 continent. years. Mm -hmm. So the point is that the point is that if it's 50 years, you are a professor. When did you start? So if let's say by the age of 20, 22, you ha you are done with your first degree. Mm -hmm. Let's say about 27, 25 years, you are done with your Masters. second degree. Okay. We should be encouraged to move to the next level. Mm -hmm. That is getting our PhDs very early. Mm -hmm. So if we have a lot of the youth within the higher education circles mm. having their PhDs, let's say, be before the age of 35 years, mm. then we can be rest assured that by the time they get to about 40 years, we have a good number of professors. Mm -hmm. Because it is, it is mandatory in most universities that before you'll be able to occupy certain roles, you it should also be. have been able to attain. Sure. So mm. we, should, we should be pushing for that agenda that mm. the yes. youth should move at a faster pace mm -hmm. in achieving their PhDs and other qualifications. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, if even if that is a challenge, we should also have a way, because I know AAU and the, the World Bank and are coming out with other programs in uh, giving scholarships mm. to certain uh, people within the youth bracket because they bring the, the cutoff point and you realize they are within the youth bracket, mm -hmm. wanting to train a lot of people uh, to get PhDs. Mm. It is a good step. So we have yeah. to encourage um, other institutions if they could also come on board mm. and see how best we can provide a lot of scholarships to the youth, especially in the academia, mm. so that they'll be able to take advantage of all these systems, all these scholarships. So by the time they get to about 40 years, they're already professors. So okay. in, in, in switching from the early to them, it will be so easy. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, even moving away from the academia, uh, when we come to the, 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 the industry itself, mm. on the average, on the African continent, you know, we have a, a, a retirement age. Sure. And the retirement age is hovering around 60, 60 years. 60 to 65. 60 to mm. 65, yes. So if 60 to 65. Mm. And from um, statistics, maybe from the UN and other, other bodies, the life expectancy of the average African it's around 60 mm. to 65. 
So if if we want to peg our retirement age at let's say the age of sixty to sixty five, what it simply means is that at the time the people are just retiring, they are, they are going to the grave. They are going to the grave. <laughs> so we have to look at the legal regimes mm. that also describes the retirement and other things. If we can even bring it down, mm. if we can bring it down from <coughs> the sixty we have now to about fifty five, so that we know that by the time you are fifty five. You are, you are hitting your retirement age. Mm. And if you are hitting your retirement age, then the, the youth could also now flow into that same circle mm -hmm. and occupy this space. Mm -hmm. So when the opportunities are there, when mm. we look at all these legal regimes um, on the country or, or the mm. national levels, mm. we put in all these things. It would also create a lot of space because if we train a lot of the youth now, they get the experience and the people that are in positions are not living are not living mm. how are they going to succeed them as are now so these are some, some of the of things the... we yeah we have to also look at the legal regimes okay because do, do you know Chrissy, mm. that even in ghana if you have not attained the age of 40 years you cannot you cannot even uh, stand to be elected for as, as president as a, yeah sure mm. why, why must that be so mm -hmm. why are we cutting out the youth. Mm -hmm. Are we saying the youth will not be able to take such leadership roles? So these are all legal regimes that we, uh, must, change. we must look at it and then see how best we can bring this age down sure. so that it can give that uh, opportunity to, to the youth. Okay, I, I agree mm -hmm. with you because um, I'm, I'm very much sure that they made that cut of point forty because of the the space and the, the, the circumstances at the time mm -hmm. where maybe they didn't have young people and in on African continent, it's assumed that um, if you're a young person, you've not really seen anything in life. And so once now we have young people who are politically mature, mm -hmm. they are socially and psychologically mature, they can handle issues. I think we need to change. We need to look at all these laws. Yes, I agree with yes. you. But, dog, we'll go for a short break. And when we return, I will be asking you a very important question that has to do with the, the retirement regime and when we start even uh, our life work as young people on the continent. Okay. Viewers, you are still watching AU Talks and today's um, conversation is very interesting. You are a young person out there and I know that you also want to start work and then also want to know the succession plan for you. Stay tuned, we'll go for a short break. This is Africa's most friendly nation, Ghana. A warm reception awaits you in an environment where you can discover and harness your full potential. Your home is an academic haven lying northeast of the city center, a quick dash from the airport. A spirited community where young, vibrant minds are empowered to express themselves, break academic boundaries, and thrive in an atmosphere of rich cultural heritage and excellence in various collegiate and extracurricular activities. This institution represents a whole new world of fun and offers you a variety of activities, facilities and services geared towards your total development. Believing in the uniqueness of all our students, we encourage them to pursue excellence in integrity. Welcome to the University of Ghana, your preferred academic destination. Welcome back from the break. You are still watching AU Talks, and today on the show we are discussing um, a succession plan or a conscious succession plan for the African youth. And I have in the studio Dr. Violet Makuku and Mr. Frank Ej. Now, Doc, um, welcome back uh, again. Before we went on the break, Frank made a very important um, statement, which I think it's it's it has to do, or we need to do a lot of advocacy on that That's in right. changing our laws, yeah. in changing our constitutions and our bylaws and things. But one key thing that worries me a lot as a young person has to do with the fact that a lot of people don't start their work life early because of the situations we have. And so, for example, someone gets a job at the age of 35, and then by 60, the person is supposed to go on retirement. And at that point, he looks back and he knows that he or she knows that there is nothing really good to, to go home to relax for and so for that matter they drag their feet and then they prolong their stay mm -hmm. just blocking or we call them gate, gate, gatekeepers blocking the, the way for the young people mm -hmm. what must we do 
as leaders of the continent? That's a tough one, Kwesi, mm. because uh, this is the reality, actually. Uh, not even because uh, they started their work early. Some were also lucky to start their careers uh, early. Mm. Some started it a bit uh, later. Mm. But um, what is really worrying, which you have said, uh, is the gatekeeping for real. Mm. This is the truth that um, when they are in those positions, if I take professors, for example, you know, they do all things with authority. Sure. They even want to show the young ones that uh, uh, we are in authority and we know. Mm -hmm. I've been a professor for so many years. What can you tell me? Mm. But the dimension you have uh, brought in is uh, really worrisome because the gatekeeping is, uh, comes in different forms. Mm. They can say, for example, in promotion, they are the ones who sit in the boards which determine the promotion criteria. Exactly. And so they want to remain few in this field. If there are fewer, it means they are always sought after for consultancy, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. They are, when they go on retirement, because institutions have no option, they will recall them. But imagine a situation where there is more training and more promotion here, yes. sure. say early doctorate. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying even with an early doctorate, if they are gatekeepers with the stringent promotion uh, criteria, how will you pass this stage where you will now be considered, you can be a dean, you can be a vice chancellor, or you can be this big person mm. in the higher education arena, for example. Mm -hmm. It would need us to change the mindset of... Uh, these professors is also to say to university leadership and other industry leaders, mm. please make sure you have the ordinances and um, the policies that are deliberately mm -hmm. opening up for the youth and women to participate as long as they are available and qualified to do so. Okay. But this one is a huge problem in some of the institutions that uh, women, by being a woman, by being a youth, you are just considered a, a child. Okay. It's, it's not spoken like that, but some people say actions speak louder than words. Whatever you say can be disregarded. And so you continue to lose so self-confidence. Mm. Other than them helping you to build self-confidence so it's the opposite okay. so we need to make sure that uh, the promotion or if somebody is uh, supervising a doctoral <laughs> student he has said let's have more youth having doctorates mm. but if my professor who is my promoter is telling me i got my phd after 10 years so you will get yours after 15 years <laughs> even in the advent <laughs> of technology mm -hmm. what is that mm -hmm. but i can assure you if you hunt around and fish around, these things are happening in our institutions. Sadly, the higher education arena, it's where the socio-economic challenges Come should order. be the solutions mm -hmm. to resolve our socio-economic challenges should come from the higher education environment. Okay. But if we are the creators of challenges which we are meant to resolve, then what are we saying about ourselves? It's a cartel. We need to create it and enjoy you within see? that space ourselves. And we need to break those cartels. Mm. And it may even need um, those young ones to voice for themselves uh, that uh, here we need the change of the status quo. Okay. Through all the possible means. But what is also important in our lives, you mm -hmm. know, that is when you are approaching a situation, it depends with how you are doing it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we also need to respect them as we approach them. But do they see that we are respecting them? At the same time, we are trying to pass on a message for them to consider and mm -hmm. change the status quo. Okay. Or they feel insulted when mm -hmm. we do that. Okay. And yet we are genuinely calling for something that brings sustainability to these organizations mm -hmm. 
mm. in the education institution. I think that, that, that yeah. point is very valid. But Frank, mm. let me, I don't know if you have something to say. Yeah, no? I, I just want to, you know, okay. the, the point Dr. Makuku made is very valid. Mm. But the point again is that um, if us are now, these cartels are broken, mm. is the youth ready? That was my first question. Yes. Is the youth ready to mm. take over? Mm -hmm. yes, That's how come I'm, I'm looking at it from the two angles. Yes. Mm. Whilst we try to break the cartel, mm -hmm. we should also as take a youth advantage. Mm. take advantage, put ourselves in that position mm -hmm. so that when they are no more there, yes we can successfully take over. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time, even when it is time for them to go on retirement, they go on a retirement. But you realize that the institutions itself will see that, no, um, we, we still need their services. Mm -hmm. So we go back to even contract them to come on consultancy basis. And it's more expensive. And it's more expensive. So, so we should be looking at it from the two angles. Okay. Whilst we are looking at how we'll be able to say goodbye to our elderly people, mm -hmm the youth should also put ourselves in that position so that when the opportunity comes, we'll be able to, to just take advantage of that. Other than that, they will go and we'll still call them back mm. and even pay them more mm. for their services. Okay. And apart from that too, even granted that um, it is a cartel, mm. we should be able to go into it and find out what the root cause of that is. Mm -hmm. I remember your earlier question, you were talking about the time some people even get into certain positions. Certain positions exactly. It is very important because if I'm getting, I'm going on retirement at the age of about 60 years and I'm able to rise into leadership mm. at age 55, it means that immediately I get there in about five years, you are off. I'm off. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it becomes a problem. So we should also be able to go back and check how all these things get to happen. Mm. Mm -hmm. So if, if there's a structural problem, mm -hmm. such that what delays these people in getting into the leadership positions at that age? Mm. We should have a, a way around it of also breaking that. Okay, mm. I think I have a very, uh, it was a very sad experience for me mm. when I was teaching back in the University of Cape Coast where um, a 50, I think she was 58 by then, was coming in to do a sandwich topper program. And then her, her, her request and her wish was that at least she would go on retirement at a certain um, position. Okay, maybe if she's a director one, then at her retirement age, she'll be a director two. That's right. And this person is just 58 years, mm. who is just going into, into, into retirement. So, so Chrissy, that is the and problem. The, the problem has been that it isn't because of the fact that she's not competent, mm. but it's, it's, there are some kind of gaps and mm. then some kind of uh, bureaucratic steps mm. you need to yes. follow. It mm. is not about your qualification. And mm. where my point, my school of thought is that do, don't you think that we need to move away from age and look at competence and, and skills and abilities of people. For example, you go into certain job or you apply for certain jobs and then, yes, I'm a C, I'm a third accountant at 21. And they look at you and at 21, what do you know? So already they are underestimating you. Yes. You are looking for someone who is 45 years old mm -hmm. and is a, 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 a CA or a third accountant yes. or has some pedigree or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. Don't you think we need to move from age specifics into competence-based recruitment. Yes, Kwesi. Mm. Agreed very much because that is the thing. You know, in most African countries, you know people say, what can you tell me, you young one? Young one. And mm. this perception goes across the board that uh, we don't even respect our youth who are doing well. Mm. Because uh, when you look at it, you are saying, ah, but what has age got to do with it? Mm -hmm. But this is the time where we should also appreciate that sometimes we were born earlier than these people, mm. but some of them are damn intelligent, sure. more intelligent than we are. We are running faster than you used exactly. to. Exactly. <laughs> so why don't we accept that and uh, use them as teaching aids? Mm. I'm telling you, at a time when I was a lecturer, so for some 14 years or so, what I said to myself is that if I realize there's a sharp student there, I would take that student and make him or her a teaching aid mm. or ask him or her to do a good presentation. They've been to Victoria Falls, has not been there. Is it a crime? 
Now I punish them for knowing a place better. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, oh, you have been there, kindly exp explain to the class mm -hmm. your experience and how it is like. So I don't know this issue of age and our culture particularly, that uh, we undermine people because they are female, uh, because they you have a married. lower, yes, right. lower position, sure. and uh, they are young. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you see? Mm -hmm. And at a point, other countries, they say, what is it that you have to offer? Mm -hmm. To an extent that uh, in some ICT fields, they may not even worry about what you come wearing or whether you're a rasta or not. <laughs> they, come, they want your idea, although we wouldn't your want it to get to, to that stage. Okay. Uh, that we want decency also in whatever we do. But this thing, we should also make sure that uh, it finds a way mm. into the system and uh, we uh, get to absorb these people. But there's one other dimension I wanted to say, Kwesi, that you realize that uh, he gave us statistics for the young ones. Yeah. Really, we are too, too far many. Mm -hmm. So what we would also advise the youth is that long back, we had a mindset and we were even deliberately asked, what do you want to do when you grow up? Mm. I want to be a nurse. I want to be a doctor. Now, in order to fill in the question he said, mm. are the youth prepared? We are supposed to say to the youth again, don't look at uh, just this succession plan. Also look at what entrepreneurial skills you can gain mm. while in university. Some universities fortunately have now these uh, incubators, mm. business incubators. So that when you graduate, you are also thinking of creating employment. If everybody wants to be employed and nobody is further creating employment, where are we going also as a continent? Okay. The young ones should also pave a way to try and be generators mm. of new businesses, mm. merging ICT and agriculture, translations and languages, and uh, they are starting to create new niches and mm. species of jobs. And then they absorb their fellow youth. Mm -hmm. Because now, if we think of the companies which have been in existence, how many people will they be able to? And the issue of skills gap comes into play. Okay, doctor, I think mm. the skills gap is a, is a broad and a bigger Area, topic on here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But let's, I want us to, yes, let me ask you the same question mm. again. Where we are looking, should we move from age specifics to to competent. Dr. Oku has given her, her version, which is good. I, I want to know your, okay. your point Okay, because well. I, I think I want to move into the opposite direction. Okay. You know, normally when we say competence, but not the age, mm -hmm. the early people also sometimes use that against the upcoming people. Okay. They'll tell you, although I'm, I'm aging, I'm, I'm still competent. Mm -hmm. I still have the knowledge. Mm -hmm. I still have the skills to deliver. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for that matter, I can still be there. Mm -hmm. No, but I'm talking from a fact where when you're applying for certain jobs, they tell you that the age bracket should be 40. Okay. Age bracket should be 30. Mm -hmm. So I may be a chartered accountant. I may be a pilot. Uh, one funny thing that happened was that we traveled somewhere and then we realized that the, the co-pilot was 21 years. Mm -hmm. When he came out, we were like, oh, if I had known he was just a little <laughs> boy. <laughs> I <wanted to laughs> that's right, that's right. I, 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 get, I, I get your point. But when you are entering into it, there is, a, there is an age bracket. If you don't qualify, mm -hmm. you are not getting in. Maybe I may have all the skills, the competence. I, I am very much prepared for that job mm -hmm. by the age takes me out. Okay, okay, Chris, let me let me handle it from this mm. angle you are coming with. Okay. You see, the point is that what is moving multinational companies to the top mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what is moving nations to the top mm -hmm. are some three, three key things. The okay. competence mm -hmm. is one. Apart from the competence, the innovation mm -hmm. is also another thing. And then the drive, when I talk of the drive, the energy okay. mm. to drive whatever you know, mm -hmm. and whatever innovation you have brought on board. These are the three things that is moving a lot of companies and mm. nations to the top. And if you look at these three attributes, mm. mainly it, 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 goes, it goes in the direction of the youth. Young people. The youth have the energy. Mm -hmm. Apart from the energy to drive the whole thing, 
um, they are more innovative because mm -hmm. of their generation yes. and the kind of new things that are coming on board. Mm -hmm. So I think it is an error for an organization to say that because you are a young person, mm. I want to deny you this opportunity for you to do something. It's an error because all the advantages of, 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 of the qualities of things that are driving organizations and then the nations. Lie within the it lies case. within the youth. Mm. And, and, and I, think, I think if that is what people are doing or organizations are doing, then it's an error. Mm. So they would have to relook at it. I'm thinking maybe uh, they bring all these things because of the experience that we spoke sure. about. Mm -hmm. They believe that aside your competence, maybe you should have also worked for a period. Mm -hmm. So I go back to my initial point again that we should be looking at the long term and by looking at the long term we should now try and bring the young people along so if you have one experienced person who has been there for about 10 years and there's a younger person at least you should find a, a, a good blend okay so that the experienced person will be passing on some of his experiences to these younger ones mm -hmm. so that in their absence they can take over mm -hmm. smoothly okay exactly. all right so and don't do you don't you think okay don't, before i come don't you mm -hmm. think that Maybe, I don't know, society is far advanced, but our laws are still the same, and we need to kind of diversify the things that we do. Well, of course, that, of that, course. That, that, that is the problem. Of course, of course, because, because as for the laws, I understand, but uh, those ones can come in the form of advocacy. Advocacy, exactly. So we advocate for that organization to look at it mm. and at least have a good blend. Okay. Because if, if our population uh, is about currently below 25 years, mm -hmm. it's about 60%. And you are not giving us opportunity that opportunity. Mm -hmm. It means that you are giving the land. opportunities to only a few. Mm -hmm. And it's not good for our continent. Okay. So it is something we have to advocate. And then in the policies of the organizations, they can come out and say that at least we want to make sure that in leadership positions, mm -hmm. about 30% or 40% of our leadership roles are occupied by the youth. Mm -hmm. So if organizations are able Com to do competent that. Competent youth. Competent youth, of mm. course. Yes. Because that's why we are saying <laughs> that they should give them the training. Sure. Exactly. They should carry them along. Yes. So by the time you carry them along and they are in their mid sections of their youth, mm. by that time you realize they that everything. they have everything okay. to also take part. And then you make a, 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 um, a deliberate effort mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that about 30 or 40% of our leadership, mm. we want to see the youth. So that when the 60% are moving on, these people will now take Mm -hmm. And then we'll bring in some new people. Okay. It becomes a cycle. Okay, I, I think we need to make uh, it like the agenda. But mm -hmm. yes. I know we have a submission. Let me add one so that you do two in one because okay. of our time. We need to mm -hmm. um, end the show. Um, don't you think that the elderly or the older people have some, some sort of insecurities in opening their doors fully to young people? For example, if I come to you, Dr. Makuku, as a quality assurance expert, and then, oh, can I work with you uh, for some time? And you know that I'm a young person, I'm smart, I'm this, I'm that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I, you realize that my suggestions and my ideas are innovative, even much more than you, mm -hmm. you tend to feel like, if I'm not careful, this boy or this girl will we, take my job. Will take my job. <laughs> what, can, how can we manage that insecurity, okay, to ensure that we are able to open up the space for young people to operate? Okay. Uh, before I tackle the insecurity directly, the mm. way you have put it, do you know that uh, this insecurity is uh, society-wide? Yes. Because uh, if I take up from what he said, that we are saying let's move up with them. I've known uh, during teaching practice mm. that students uh, say, parents come and say, I don't want my child who is taught by a student teacher. Mm -hmm. You go to the hospital, somebody, a patient comes and say, they don't want an injection administered by, by a student a nurse. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, can you see, years before, we had student teachers, student nurses, student doctors. If they were not given this opportunity to practice, mm -hmm. would we still be having these institutions, the teaching institutions, hospitals the hospitals, and, mm -hmm. would we still have them? Not at all. This is the mindset that I'm saying today, I'm appealing to our people to mm. say, please open up your mind and we need to leave the selfishness. Mm. And these people, by the way, because they do it under the supervision of experienced people, which is exactly what we are saying, that be a guide, like a tour guide, and mentor 
groom them, and they will get there. Mm. Even the mistakes we have been making uh, uh, talk about, these things will not be heard of. Mm. Because at any moment, until I see that you are now okay, most of the time, or all the time, the mentor, the grooming person is always with them. Yeah, sure. Then the insecurities too. It's very, very unfortunate when we talk of the insecurities. Because I wanted to say, for example, when you look at the uh, hierarchy or uh, promotional stages uh, in the university, I will just give that example. Okay. We start by having maybe teaching assistants, mm -hmm. and the teaching assistants can now be promoted into lecturers. Mm -hmm. uh, the lecturers are promoted into senior, senior lecturers. Do you see, I'm just trying to say, for the gap between a professor and a teaching assistant or a lecturer who is not yet an associate professor mm. is so huge. Yeah. And some of the posts too, they are spelled out the number of years of experience and all that. So that is the uh, competitive advantage of mm. those who fear, who have got insecurities. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm only an assistant lecturer, and you don't want to groom me or to take on board this idea, at what point am I a threat to you? Mm. When I'm not yet even a lecturer, mm -hmm. and even an associate professor, it takes time to publish. And sometimes, they may be good in giving you these ideas and so on, but you know for somebody to be appointed to a post, it depends with their personality, mm. it depends with their competences, okay. it depends with their experiences. Mm. And sometimes the people whom we feel secure about do not have uh, the personalities or experience to be appointed onto the posts which we are holding. That, that's so, good. so why should we always feel secure about, even if it is so, mm. take yourself, be empathetic, and put yourselves into their shoes that you are even victimizing you, uh, uh, victimizing them mm. for trying to help you. Because at the time when you are on the helm, if you succeed because of their input, it's your name. Sure. It's the name of who is there as the head, who mm. is the vice chancellor, who is the what what, who is the dean, who mm -hmm. is the chairperson. Mm -hmm. It's not yet about this individual. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Makuku. <laughs> a good conversation never ends, and so I know that mm -hmm. we have a lot to say. But let me take a final word, and okay. then we can end the show. So, okay, um, Frank, your final word. Yeah, Kwezi, I think I just want to have a bite on this. Yes, but in, in your final way, I want to ask, because it's more or less like an advocacy, mm -hmm. let's have the clear things that we've, we've said, the three or maybe three, four things that African government, those in leadership, must do. Okay, Kwesi. So um, in, in my concluding statement, mm -hmm. I just want to talk on, on um, just say a little on the insecurity. Okay. Yeah. It's a major point. Yeah. Because the point is that all the discussions we have had for all these things to be very fruitful, mm -hmm. it is the people that are in leadership. Mm -hmm. They would have to play a very good role, a strategic, a strategic role, role mm -hmm. for all these things to, to come happen. to pass. Yes. Yes. Because they, 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 they have the power to bring out the policies mm -hmm. and all these things. So how do we break that? Because if they feel insecure, mm -hmm. and for that matter, they would not want to carry the youth along mm -hmm. so that in their absence, they will take over. Maybe they are looking at it that if they should take them along, they will rather come and overtake them. Absolutely. And then take their job. Then mm. it's very dangerous. Mm. So what we can do uh, is that we should also look at how we say goodbye to them. Mm. We should be thinking because with the retirement packages that are on our continent, mm. it is nothing very to write. It's <laughs> yes. very appalling. Mm. So even when they hear the term retirement, mm -hmm. They are frightened. Yes. yes. They are frightened. Mm. So for That's that reason, so for that reason, if we are not able to solve that problem, because if I'm going home and I'm smiling and I know that at, at the end achieved. of the day, I have worked and I'm going home with a very good retirement package, mm. yeah. what is there to fear? Mm. I need to go and rest and whatever package I have, then I can rest and enjoy that package. Mm. That so it is very important we look at the goodbye packages mm -hmm. that we put in place for... As gracious. That's right. <laughs> we, we put in place for them so that they yes. can also go 
happily. And if they know that, if they are training someone, they are carrying someone along, they don't have a problem. They're very confident. So. And then finally, uh, to, to talk of all that we, we've discussed now, mm. university industry linkages. The industry must open their doors mm -hmm. to the investors, the students that they are training. So whilst they are training the students, they get some hands-on work experience, work experience mm -hmm. whilst they are there. So that immediately they come, they are not handicapped. They would have some uh, experience mm -hmm. so that they are not going to use any clauses to, clear let's them. say, to clear them. Okay. That okay. is one. Apart from that too, uh, we need to also maybe up our training, especially mm -hmm. the scholarship packages I spoke about, mm -hmm. that we should be able to train a lot of the youth, especially giving them these scholarship packages mm -hmm. so that they can be well prepared, especially okay. in the academia. Okay. Because when you do not have a PhD, you don't dream of becoming a head of department mm -hmm. or anything. So even now to be a lecturer, that is a starting point. Even, it's even a starting point. Yes, so starting point. so yeah. that is a point. Mm -hmm. And then we have to also look at the legal regimes mm -hmm. where we don't have certain laws that will prevent you as a, as a youth. Mm -hmm. to get into certain, certain positions. Spaces, okay. If if they are coming out with any laws, they should factor or they should also be looking at it. We should be looking at it that they should form the greater percentage, currently about 60%, mm. and that's under 25. If we want to extend it to 40, it's about 70 to about 80%. 75%, yes. Mm. So that is also very important. Okay. And then um, finally, the retirement age, okay, so the retirement age could also come into the, policy, the, yeah, the policies the yeah. and other things. That's if we're able to look at all these things and put them in the right perspective, I think we are good to go. Ah, thank you so much. Brilliant point. Dr. Makoku. Mine, uh, I have a few points that um, let's uh, guard against the gatekeeping. Mm. Very, very uh, negative in the sense that it uh, acts against all the gains that we mm. could have for our mm. organizations mm. and what. And also our promotion, sometimes it's unnecessarily stringent and highly bureaucratic. Mm. And so you find it's deliberately made by those who have crossed over mm. so that they remain few and they are in demand. But it's not the right situation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you would even uh, see that the numbers are not even sustainable. Mm -hmm. uh, before even they retire, they may see the gap and start firefighting. Sure. The other one is, uh, let's mentor them. Let's not be afraid of them. Let's mentor them. Let's groom them. Let's also listen to their ideas, implement them, mm -hmm. and give them confidence. Mm. We also need to allow them to be part of the implementation Processes. strategy mm. and process so by so doing they are even earning the experience which we often tend to to say that uh, we can't give them this we can't appoint them to that because they are inexperienced but mm. we are blocking them who will give them the experience if we who are already in the system are not creating the space for them mm. so let's create the space for the youth Let's accommodate them. It's for the good uh, of everyone. And okay. uh, these are my last words. And even the uh, very, very last, last Yes, Dr. Mungu will always have a very, very, very last. <laughs> <laughs> it's that uh, we need also to even be worried as institutions mm. to do a skills gap analysis. Okay. To say now, how many lecturers do are of this mm. age? Yes. When will they retire? Mm -hmm. So that already that one will reduce insecurity exactly. because if you are sure that by this time we will not have these people then you allow them the youth to mm -hmm. come in mm -hmm. and occupy those positions our recruitment mm -hmm. framework let it be accommodative of reasonable percentages mm -hmm. of the youth and the female not that we see only the uh, white heads of men in okay. the boardrooms and everywhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, one key thing we couldn't discuss has to do with the fact that we have a lot of the young people in the non-formal sector. Yes. But then our conversation, we're looking at only those in the, in the formal form. sector. So I think uh, a good conversation never ends. Mm -hmm. In the right. next episode, we'll try our best possible yes. 
to how we can also cater for the cater young for people them, yeah. in the oh, pharma sector. Viewers, thank you so much for watching. This has been AU Talks, and I've been hosting Dr. Violet Makuku, who is a quality assurance expert here at the Association of African Universities, and then also Mr. Frank J., who is a chartered accountant and a project accountant here at the Association of African Universities. My name is Chrissy Sam, and we were discussing a succession plan for the African youth. Keep watching our videos and let your comments um, come in. Thanks again for watching.